Welcome to Online Worship with Walnut Grove Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor James, and I'm so glad that you're worshiping with us today. If you haven't worshiped with us before, here's what's going to happen. Our service will be about an hour in length, and we'll sing some songs. We'll hear some readings from the Bible. I will share with you a reflection that I've prepared that's based on those readings. And then we'll end our time of worship together in prayer. If you would like to connect with our church, perhaps to ask for some information or to send us a prayer request, and we'd be very happy to pray for you, you can do that through our online connect card, which you can find at wglc.org connect. There is a order of service uh, for today's worship service and notes for today's message on our church app. If you would like to download our church app onto your device, you can find a link to do that at wglc.org slash church app. For prayer requests, sermon takeaways, and in-worship communication, I invite you to use the WGLC a group on WhatsApp, and you can get a link to that group at wglc.org slash WhatsApp. Let's begin our time of worship together in prayer. Gracious and loving Lord, what a wonderful thing it is that we can gather, uh, even though we're separated because of this pandemic, we can still gather together and worship you. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your presence in our lives and the way you are drawing us ever closer to you. And so we pray, Lord, that you would open us up to receive whatever it is you have for us in worship today and help us to respond to you with praise and adoration. In the beautiful and strong name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, we ask this. Amen. Satisfied for every sin on him. Was 
This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Timothy. We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. We always pray for you, and we give thanks to our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. This same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant, and he is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given to you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the ways you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in that inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us Jesus of Nazareth have you come to destroy us I know who you are the Holy One of God but Jesus reprimanded him be quiet come out of the man he ordered at that the evil spirit screamed threw the man into a convulsion and then came out of him amazement gripped the audience and they began to discuss what had happened what sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. It has such authority. Even evil spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee. After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away. So he went to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her sit up. Then the fever left her, and she prepared a meal for them. That evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak.
Do you guys like clever puzzles? I do. I like word puzzles. I have a couple here. This one, it's banana split. Get it? The word banana split. How about this one? Can you figure out that one? It's scrambled eggs. See, all those letters make the word eggs. This one is my favorite. Tuna fish. Get it? Two, na fish, na fish, two times. <laughs> I know. It's never a good joke when you have to explain it, is it? So, do you like to be smart? I like to learn things. Today, we just heard in the Bible verse about praying for people so that they would grow in knowledge. It doesn't really mean being clever or smart. It means growing in the knowledge of God. It's a really, really, really powerful verse from the book of Colossians. And can I kind of go over some of the highlights. It's from Colossians 1. It says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. Wow, not stopped praying for you. That you would be filled with the knowledge of God and his will. And we pray that you would live a life worthy of the Lord, that it would please him and you would bear fruit in every good work. You would grow in the knowledge of God. You would be strengthened. You would have great endurance and patience, and you'd joyfully give thanks. Those are some pretty strong things, aren't they? Can you imagine knowing that people are praying for you like that? Guess what? People are praying for us like that. And I think it's great that we can be together and in prayer and praying for each other. There's something that I do. I keep a church directory right in the left-hand side of my drawer by my desk where I do my work. And you know what I do? I open up the drawer and I find a page and I pray for the people on that page. It might be your family sometime. I look through here and I think of you guys and I remember you and I pray those things. You know what we should do now? We should have a prayer. Dear God, help us to pray for each other. Help us to grow in our knowledge of you. Help us to read the Bible and learn more of you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. I'll be praying for you. Today we're going to begin a new series called Bridge. It's based on the book of Colossians. And over the next five weeks, we are going to be looking at how Jesus leads us to a better life by leading us across a bridge of faith in him. So I hope that you'll uh, join us for that and invite others to do the same. Several years ago when our children were small, and this was the time when we were living in Saskatchewan, what we would do is we would actually vacation in British Columbia. And one year when we were on our way home for the holiday, from holidays, we stopped at a cherry orchard and it was the end of the season and the owner invited us to come and pick whatever we wanted and he sold us the cherries at a discounted price. And so it was a beautiful day and uh, Susan and I and our children were uh, picking cherries and uh, the owner helped us by finding ladders for us to use. And we were able to take those cherries home and it was a lot of work to process them, but then we were able to enjoy cherries for a long time after that. Fruit is a wonderful thing. It's such a huge blessing. It's nutrition, it's nutritious, it's tasty, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, but here's the thing about fruit. Uh, we can't make it happen. We can't make a plant or a tree produce fruit. We can do uh, what we can to control certain circumstances, but we can't control uh, everything, and we can't actually make that uh, plant produce fruit. So it's kind of mysterious. And the same thing happens in our lives. We're living in a time where it's kind of a challenging time in uh, the history of this planet, and with the pandemic and all that's going on. And yet, uh, you add on to that the rest of life challenge, life's challenges, and it can be kind of a, a daunting thing to think about uh, how can my life produce uh, fruit, that is, uh, produce something that brings joy and uh, love and uh, peace and, 
and happiness to other people. And so that's the question we're thinking about today. How can we live our lives in such a way that we produce fruit and, and fruit that not only lasts for this life, but lasts for all eternity. And so we're doing that uh, through our first passage in this series that we're looking at in the book of Coloss Colossians. So it's Colossians uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. So if you have a Bible or a Bible app, I invite you to turn there now. And uh, some of the background that will uh, help you uh, in uh, uh, understanding uh, what we're looking at here is uh, Paul was uh, a missionary who uh, brought the gospel to this part of the world. This is in what was uh, called Asia Minor or uh, present-day Turkey. And though he didn't start the Christian church in Colossians, what he did do is he started an, uh, a church in Ephesus, a, a city uh, a couple hours away. And uh, uh, he was there in Ephesus for three years. It's uh, from his letter to that community that we have our book uh, in the Bible called Ephesians. And while Paul was at Ephesus, there was a, young, a man by the name of Epaphras who then took the message that Jesus taught of life and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, took it to the town of Colossae and started a church there. Now, what happened is over time, uh, that message of uh, life and forgiveness through Jesus Christ as a totally free gift kind of got mixed up in Colossae. And what was happening is people were beginning to believe that they had to add to what Jesus had already done in order to complete the job of uh, saving them and bringing them into new life with God. Now, uh, the things that they were uh, believing, at least some of the people in Colossae, were that you had to follow certain ceremonies or you had to eat uh, certain foods or you had to adopt certain philosophies in order to complete what uh, Jesus had begun. And while uh, having you know, our minds straightened out and, and thinking correctly is a good thing, as is um, uh, observing traditions that are life-giving and uh, eating healthy foods, when we take these things and we make them our way of uh, relating to God and our way of thinking, we're going to be saved from all the challenges and difficulties in life, then that's a big problem. We're taking a gift or gifts from God and making in, them into something more than what God intended for them to be. And whenever we have a self-built bridge of uh, uh, faith and salvation like that, it's always going to fail. It's always going to collapse under the weight of the challenges in this life. And then our life is going to be, you know, down in the valley below. We're going to be uh, toast, so to speak. So when Epaphras came to Rome, uh, where Paul was in house arrest at the time, and told them about uh, the problems back in Colossae, uh, Paul wrote this letter uh, to the Colossian church. Now, uh, here's, here's why it was important that Paul do that. Imagine that you have a heart that is very sick and diseased, and you need to have open heart surgery. And now also imagine that there is a surgeon nearby you who is available and willing to do the surgery for you. And as you uh, check around and uh, ask people who've had surgery done by her in the past, you find out that she's a very good surgeon, surgeon and she has a very high success rate. And so you believe what you've been told, and you then put your life in her hands, and you also follow of the pre-op procedures that she told you to do so that you could give that heart surgery its best chance of success. Now, imagine a slightly different scenario. You still need open heart surgery, and uh, there still is this surgeon available to do your surgery. And there are people who have told you that she's a very good and capable uh, sur surgeon. But you also hear a different message. You hear a message saying that she 
um, you know, doesn't quite do the whole job and you actually have to help her along if you want your heart surgery to be a success. And so then what you do is you believe the second message, a message that uh, really isn't true, but you believe it as if it is true. And so you decide that you're going to uh, help the surgeon. Your actions are based on what you believe to be true. And so then what you do on the morning of the surgery, while you're still at home, you decide to help her by opening up your own chest with a rusty jackknife that you have at home in order to help uh, the process along because you believe that's the right thing to do. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Well, you're probably, I mean, if the surgery does go ahead, it's going to be a disaster because your actions made things worse. And that happened because you were believing something that wasn't true. And so we have this kind of a, uh, you know, a train, you could say, where there is a need to be rescued. Then there's a rescuer. And then there's a message about the rescuer. And that is followed by our belief about that message. And then there's our actions, which are always based on that belief. And so this, uh, this train, if you could say, uh, if you could call it that, happens in all areas of life. So last a week ago Wednesday on January the 6th, there was thousands of people who stormed the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. and uh, took it over for a brief time because they believed that uh, President Donald Trump had won the presidential elections in November and that that victory had been stolen away from him. And so they were acting on things that they believed to be true and their actions fit with what their beliefs were, but their beliefs uh, were based on something that wasn't true. And the consequences were disastrous. But here's the thing, a bridge of faith that's built on Jesus as our ultimate rescuer will never fail. We need to be rescued. That's evident uh, not only by all of the things that are happening in the world, uh, that's plain and obvious, but if we look closely in the mirror, we'll see that we too need to be rescued, that we too have uh, thinking and uh, actions that are kind of uh, messed up and headed in the wrong direction. And it's it's not even like we can uh, help it because this has been the story of humanity ever since our first parents turned away from God. And uh, the result is where there used to be unity between human beings and God. Uh, now the default uh, situation is for humans and God to be uh, divided and at loggerheads with one another. And so um, Jesus is God, the son who came into the world to remedy that. He wrapped himself in human flesh and became one of us in order to save us. Uh, he lived a perfect human life that counts as uh, goodness and purity and, and wholeness for all of us. And then he took our place by going to the cross and uh, suffering and dying there to pay the full cost of forgiveness for all the sins of everyone. And then he uh, proved that his victory was complete um, when he rose from the dead uh, on the third day after he had died. And so with Jesus, we have forgiveness for all of our sins and we have uh, salvation that is healing for ourselves, both on the inside and on the outside. Uh, the healing that we have right now is on the inside and it's uh, hidden from the world. And uh, one day though, Jesus is going to come back to this world and everyone will see him and he's going to make us and all things right. And then that healing on the inside will be evident on the outside. And we'll have new resurrection bodies, which are our old bodies recreated and restored and made new so that they'll never get old, never get sick and never die. And we'll be body and soul uh, together, both fully cleansed, and we'll be more human than we've ever been before. 
and we'll be able to see Jesus with our own eyes and live with him forever in the new heaven and earth to come. And so that uh, message, so Jesus is our ultimate, We first of all, we need to be rescued. That's the first thing that, that's important for us to be to believe. Uh, second, Jesus is the ultimate rescuer and all of those things that he gives us of uh, forgiveness and eternal life and salvation, he gives them to us as a totally free gift. And so that message that Jesus has come into the world uh, to save us, and he does uh, save us uh, through the faith that we have in him, that message is called the gospel. And then as we uh, believe the gospel, then what starts to happen is uh, we start to act based on what we believe to be true. So I love the way uh, uh, that rescue is described for us in uh, the message paraphrase of the Bible. In Colossians 1, 13 to 14, it's put this way in the message. God rescued us from dead-end alleys and dark dungeons. He's set us up in the kingdom of the son he loves so much. The son who got us out of the pit we were in got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. And so Jesus is that ultimate rescuer. And uh, Paul, as he uh, writes this letter to the church in uh, Colossae to kind of correct this mixed up thinking that people have. And, you know, we have mixed up thinking too. The thing that he does is he um, holds before them the prominence of Jesus Christ as uh, the ultimate rescuer. And uh, he says, the second thing that he does is he uh, talks about this message, this good news message, what we call the gospel message of forgiveness and salvation and eternal life uh, through Jesus who has rescued us from sin, death, and everlasting uh, separation from God uh, by going, uh, coming into this world, uh, living a perfect life, uh, going to the cross to suffer and die, and then rising again on the third day. That's uh, the gospel message. And Paul says, wherever that's being shared, uh, it's bearing fruit. He writes this in Colossians 1 verse 6. It, that is this message, is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. And so the fruit of the gospel message is transformed lives as people hear the message, receive it, and then um, live their lives uh, based on that belief. But there's something a little bit more that's happening as well, and we will get to that later. Paul also talks about the importance of believing that gospel message. In verses 4 and 5, he uh, says this, For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have this, or you have had this expectation ever since you heard the truth of the good news. And so what Paul is doing here is uh, commending people for believing that message about Jesus to be true. It's that message that gives us confident hope of what God has reserved for us in heaven. You see, we can trust the message about Jesus, the gospel message about Jesus, because Jesus really is who he says he is. He really is God the Son. He really is full, fully human. And Jesus really did what he said he did, that is to uh, go to the cross for you and for all of your brokenness and all of your sins and all of your guilt and all of your shame were taken away from you by Jesus on the cross. And he really did rise from the dead. And he really is uh, with us right here and right now, wherever we're at. And Jesus really will do what he says he's going to do. That is to say, he really he really will raise you from the dead uh, to live with him forever in the new heaven and earth to come. 
And so uh, you can see that Jesus has built a bridge between heaven and earth for us. And because of Jesus, we can walk across that bridge. We always have that uh, connection to heaven through Jesus right now. And so we can confidently pray to our Father in heaven, knowing that he hears us, he's uh, listening to us like a loving uh, father listens to his children, and he's already leaning forward to give to us uh, what he knows is best for us in our time of need. And all of that is uh, because of Jesus. It's all a free gift. And so then uh, what we uh, can do is we can act according to what we believe. We put our, because we believe the gospel message about Jesus, the ultimate rescuer, we then put our lives in the hands of Surgeon Jesus, and we let him perform a heart transplant on us. We let him take out our heart of stone and give to us, in exchange, a heart of love. And with that new heart that we have from Jesus, uh, we can live a new life with him. And to give that uh, new life the greatest chance of uh, flourishing and succeeding, then uh, what we do is we continue to follow Jesus. This isn't a, a one-time uh, event. We, we continue to follow Jesus to become more like Jesus. And uh, we show others how to do the same. That, in essence, is the definition of a disciple, uh, someone who follows Jesus to become like Jesus and shows others how to do the same. And uh, as Paul writes, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. So here's the fruit uh, piece coming. And all the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. And so we do things, but that doesn't earn our salvation. It doesn't earn our forgiveness. Uh, we do things um, because we know we already have it. Uh, it's a totally free gift from Jesus. Uh, we believe that uh, to be true, that we already have new life with Jesus. We already have forgiveness with him. And so then we live as if that is actually true because it really, really is. And as we do that, as we live believing in the message of Jesus, what he's done for us, who he is, and what he will do for us in the future, as we do that, Jesus will produce fruit in us, fruit like faith and hope and love and patience and endurance and joy and thankfulness in our lives. And then this fruit that Jesus produces in us has the potential to make an eternal difference in uh, someone else's life. Because as they see that fruit and they are somehow uh, drawn toward the one who produced that fruit in us, which is Jesus, then they can enjoy eternal life and salvation and uh, forgiveness for all their sins with him as well. So what does this mean for us? Well, we cling to the truth of that gospel message. And uh, with respect to other matters, like daily life, uh, what we do is we listen to what Jesus tells us. It's like that uh, Kairos uh, circle that we were thinking about uh, a year ago in our messages, how uh, Jesus uh, shows us that some of the old things that we believe and some of the old things that we used to do are no longer true, so we discard them and we adopt the new beliefs and the new uh, practices that Jesus gives to us. And it's kind of an ongoing thing. Whenever there's a crisis, that's an opportunity for us to learn from Jesus uh, about what's not true, uh, and but we believed it was, and then get rid of those things and believe instead in the new truth that Jesus is trying to uh, teach to us. And so then we act on those uh, new beliefs, and that's really what following Jesus is all about, uh, following with him whichever direction he takes us. In 2005, Tony Dungy faced a really big disappointment. 
He was the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. The team was the number one seed, and they were favored to win the Super Bowl that year. And yet they lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Pitt. Pittsburgh Steelers, who went on to win the Super Bowl. And people were beginning to think and to talk uh, that uh, perhaps the Indianapolis Colts, even though they were a really good team, were never going to win the Super Bowl. But uh, Tony says this, he says that uh, how you respond and in uh, times of disappointment and failure uh, actually says more uh, than how you respond in times of success. You see, uh, Tony is a follower of Jesus Christ, and he faced disappointment before. Uh, prior to coaching in Indianapolis, he was coaching in uh, Tampa Bay. And uh, though the uh, paradigm when he went there in the uh, late 90s was uh, for NFL coaches to be perfectionists who expected their players to be perfect on the field, uh, Tony had a very different approach. He cared more about uh, whether or not his players had eternity in their heart or not. And he uh, he wanted to um, lead a team, create a team uh, where the staff and the players cared about each other, uh, where they cared about uh, their uh, community, And uh, the character uh, was a really important thing, that they were doing the right thing in terms of uh, their families and in uh, their lives in general. You see, uh, Tony felt like it was Jesus who had uh, led him to Tampa Bay, and he wanted uh, wanted Jesus to be part of his life as a head coach there. And even though he took the Buccaneers to the playoffs four of the six years, that he was uh, head coach there, Tony was fired in 2001 uh, for not winning a Super Bowl. And that, uh, he says, is one of the biggest disappointments of his life. But he didn't change who he was or what he did. And so he used the same approach in Indianapolis. And even though they had that huge disappointment in uh, 2005, uh, Tony persevered. And the team won the Super Bowl in 2007. And one of the highlights of that day for Tony is when the team waited around and gathered together 40, say 40 minutes after the game was over, to do what they had done after every game, and that is to have a team prayer. Because they wanted to honor the Lord in their victory. And a picture was taken of that, uh, even though the team had asked photographers and reporters to not take pictures. But that uh, picture went around the world on the internet. And what it did was it um, displayed uh, for everyone to see uh, that the team uh, valued uh, putting Jesus first, even after uh, winning a Super Bowl. And so, uh, Tony says this. He says that's what he's tried to do in life. He's tried to make every decision through the lens of Jesus Christ. His goal is to put Jesus first in all things and for uh, him, that is Tony's uh, desires and preferences and thoughts, to be second. And uh, and, uh, Tony also said that what Jesus promises us is this, that when we do that, when we uh, put him first in all things and make our decisions through uh, the lens of uh, of him, who he is, and, and, and the fact that he's our Savior, then what Jesus has promised us is that he will come into our lives as our head coach and lead us to that ultimate victory at the end of time. And so the challenge that I have for you today is to simply do what uh, Tony Dungy has been doing uh, throughout his life. And that is to put Jesus first in all things and to make your decisions through the lens of Jesus and to put yourself and your thoughts and your desires uh, second. And when you do that, Jesus will produce fruit in your life uh, 
uh, that will last, uh, last for all eternity. Uh, as Jesus says in John uh, chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And later he says, I give them eternal life and nothing can snatch them out of my hand. And so remember that faith in Jesus produces fruit in our life that will last forever. Amen. So I'm inviting you to think about this question. As a result of what uh, you have received from Jesus in the message today, what is one thing that he is giving to you to believe or to do? So if you're watching online during our worship service, I invite you to type in your uh, insight in the chat section or on WhatsApp. And as you do that, your um, takeaways can be a blessing and an encouragement to others. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being our ultimate rescuer. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to receive and believe uh, that wonderful message in all of its fullness, and then to live um, our lives based on that truth, that we are uh, completely forgiven and we have new life in you, and that uh, one day you will come back to uh, restore and renew us and all things. And help us, Lord, to uh, live your um, the new life that you've given us and to, re to uh, reflect your love into the world around us. And we pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen.
Our church office will be open from Monday to Wednesday this week and will be closed on Thursday. Well, the live stream equipment that we've ordered arrived today. And so here is the computer brains behind all of the operation, the device that does all of the mixing and uh, sending uh, signals out to the internet. Uh, this is our communications equipment. Uh, this is our video camera. We have uh, one more to come. And then there's a couple of converters that hook up to the camera. And then these are tripods. So uh, what we have to do now is uh, set it up and test it and get everything working and then uh, train some people on how to use it. And uh, when that's done, which I hope won't be too long, but it'll take a few weeks, uh, we'll be able to live stream our worship services. Hey everyone, my name is Chris. And as most of you know, I serve on the senior ministry team of Walnut Grove Lutheran Church. Here at WGLC, our vision is to be a church that helps people of all ages be passionate about, equipped for, and effective at transforming lives for the kingdom of God. If you would like to partner with us financially in this great and wonderful mission that God has given to us, please give online. You can donate at wglc.org donate, or if you would like to set up an ongoing giving relationship with us, please email us at admin at wglc.org, and we can make arrangements so that that can happen. Thanks for your support. Well, this is another one of the new things I've never done before, uh, but it's a joyous occasion because we get to welcome, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, people as members of Walnut Grove Lutheran Church. And I have with me today, uh, Susan and Mike Eisner and Dave Elliott and Rhonda Kalman. And though you can't see them, uh, Otto and Shauna Ratz are also with We're us. We're here. Yes. So let's begin. It's very easy for us to get confused about what membership means in a church. With most organizations, membership means that you have special rights or privileges, or that you get access to secret sales or special discounts that non members don't get. But membership in a church is not like membership in any other human organization. The most important thing in a church is not whether or not you are a member. The most important thing is whether or not you are a follower of Jesus. Everyone who believes in Jesus is part of the one holy, invisible, universal, global Christian church. The Christian church is a unified living body composed of many individual parts, all of them equal. All are important, and each has an important role to play in accomplishing God's mission. The Holy Spirit gathers us into various local congregations where we receive God's gifts together in worship, and we work side by side with our sisters and brothers in Christ to be a church that helps people of all ages to be passionate about, equipped for, and effective at transforming lives for the kingdom of God. For a Christian, membership in a local church is a commitment. When someone becomes a member of a Christian church, they are committing themselves to live out their life as a follower of Jesus in the midst of a particular community of faith. And they are committing themselves to support the work of that community of faith as they seek to accomplish the mission of God. Today, we have an opportunity to welcome uh, some new members to our church. And it's also an important opportunity for those of us who are, all, are already members to recommit ourselves to God and his mission and to our sisters and brothers in Christ. So I invite each of you to answer the following questions. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil and all his empty promises? Yes, I, I do. do. I renounce. do. Um, do you I believe do. in God, the Father Almighty? Now this might get a little, uh, when we have various voices reciting together, um, it doesn't always work very well on Zoom. Uh, maybe 
is there one of you that would be willing to be the representative of all of you and speak on behalf of all of you? Who was that? <laughs> I can. Okay, so Rhonda, can you? Rhonda. <laughs> because it'll, uh, I think, otherwise, nobody will be able to understand what anybody is saying. Sound okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, we will assume that every one of us agrees with what Rhonda is going to say here. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I uh, just can't mess up. <laughs> that's okay. There's, if you mess up, there's grace. Oh, good. So, uh, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now I ask uh, all of you uh, to consider carefully making the following commitments. And for this one, I, I will invite you to all speak. And the commitments that I'm asking you to consider are this, that as you follow Jesus, do you commit yourself to follow him as part of this community of faith and share with us in all the blessings and challenges that God sets before us? And do you commit yourself to support the ministry of this church with your prayers and service and financial gifts? If your answer is yes, then please say, I do with the help of God. I do, I do with, with the help of God. God. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I welcome you as members of this church. Amen. 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 Let me pray for you. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks for Susan and Mike and Dave and Rhonda and Shauna and Otto. And uh, we thank you. Lord, that uh, they are now uh, part of the group you've gathered here at Walnut Grove Lutheran Church. And uh, we pray that uh, we would um, be a blessing to them as uh, they are to us. We thank you for who they are and for uh, the gifts that you have given to them. And um, yeah, we just pray that you would bless our entire church as we seek to uh, walk together and follow you wherever you lead us. And so I ask for your blessing upon uh, this entire group. And I ask this in the beautiful and strong name of Jesus, your son, our savior. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have cake now? <laughs> <Get the coffee. laughs> yeah, there'll be Bring coffee you in the <laughs> oh you don't go in the kitchen do you no <laughs> yes you do <laughs> yeah i go in the kitchen sometimes then i know uh it'll be a while if we're waiting for me to bake the cake though <laughs> okay. before we enter into our time of prayer let's recenter ourselves in god's love by admitting our need for forgiveness I invite you to join with me in speaking together these words of confession. Dear Jesus, you are the visible image of the invisible God sent to be a bridge between heaven and earth for us. In spite of your love and graciousness, we often take the things you have created and misuse them to try to build our own bridge to heaven. Our hearts need to be recentered on you. Please forgive us and set our feet back on the highway of holiness. 
Help us to trust that you are the bridge to a better life that will never fail us. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from God. God has made you alive with Jesus Christ, for he has forgiven you all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against you and took them all away by nailing them to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities and shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So don't let anyone condemn you for what Jesus Christ has already forgiven you for. Jesus has made you a beloved, forgiven child of God, and you have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to share God's love with a broken and hurting world. Go in the freedom and the joy of your forgiveness. Amen. As we enter into our time of prayer today, if you are watching on our online worship platform or um, on YouTube, I guess, and it's around our regular worship time of 10 a.m. Pacific on Sunday morning, and there's someone or some uh, thing about which you're praying, and you'd like to include that in our prayers today, then please type it into those uh, various uh, chat sections or on the WhatsApp channel for Walnut Grove Lutheran Church, and we'll include those in our uh, prayers. If you're praying for a person, just type in their first name only. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise and honor and glory for many things, uh, for who you are and for your great and wonderful and unconditional and infinite love for us. And uh, today we also thank you, Lord, for the good news that uh, Tariq Nadim is now well. And uh, we pray that you would uh, continue to watch over and keep his, him and his family safe. And we pray, Lord, that you would hurry the day when they could come to uh, Canada and we could help them to begin a new life here. Uh, watch over, Lord, we pray. Uh, especially his two daughters, watch over the whole family, but especially his two daughters who are uh, still in detention. We thank you, Lord, that April M's surgery was a success and that she's now home recovering. And we pray, Lord, that you would have your healing hand upon her uh, as she uh, recovers. And we pray that you would uh, give her, uh, that you would restore her to complete health. Uh, We pray, Lord, for our world and we ask for peace wherever there is war or violence. We pray for uh, your wisdom for government leaders around the world, uh, especially uh, because of these challenges, challenging times in which we find ourselves. Uh, We pray, Lord, for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise and uh, Glory and honor as well for the great and wonderful news that the vaccines, first of all, that there's vaccines that have been developed, and secondly, that they are very, very effective. This is uh, truly a gift from you, and uh, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us to uh, wait patiently while uh, those who need the vaccine most uh, get it first. And we pray upon uh, your blessing. We pray for your blessing upon the vaccination program that's happening in British Columbia, uh, across Canada, and around uh, the world. Lord, we pray for all uh, people who are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ around the world, and especially for missionaries who are often doing so in difficult uh, circumstances. And so t- today we lift up to you two. Uh, missionaries. Uh, we pray for Reverend Jesus Alberto Dominguez, who serves as the pastor of Cristo Rey Lutheran Church in the community of Rialejo in Nicaragua. And we also pray for Reverend Clan Chan, who is a missionary pastor for the Yarai community in the, the village of Rotonakiri in Cambodia. Lord, we pray for Pastor Chan and Pastor Dominguez, and we ask that you would 
strengthen them and encourage them and uh, work through them in a powerful way to draw the hearts of more and more people closer and closer to you. Lord, we lift up to you all who are in need of your healing. Uh, We pray for any and all who are ill because of COVID-19. We ask that you restore them. We pray for Julianne L., who is diagnosed with breast cancer and has surgery tomorrow. We pray for Barbara, who has cancer, and for Scott, who is going through a very difficult time right now. And we lift up to you others who are in need of your healing touch. Joan D., Ryan V.'s father, Pastor Carl, Damaris K., Jordan M., Helmut, Corey, William H.'s father, Dario, Sean, Ruth H., Sandy, Marilyn, and Glenn. And we also pray for others who we know need your healing, and we now name them before you in silent prayer. Dear Lord, you are the great physician and the source of all healing whenever it happens. And so we pray that you would strengthen our loved ones, both in body and in spirit. Help them to know that you are always with them, that you always love them, and that they are forever safe with you. Lord, we pray for all those who are grieving. We especially pray for those who have lost loved ones due to COVID-19. We also pray for Susan and Jerry and the rest of their family who are grieving the loss of Susan's mom, Nina. And we pray also for the family and friends of Paul O, who are grieving his uh, death. And we pray for others who we know are grieving, and we now lift them before you in the silence of our hearts. Dear Jesus, we thank you for dying for us on the cross and rising again to give us the sure and certain promise of resurrection life. We pray that you would wrap your arms of love around all who are grieving and comfort them with your presence and your promise of life eternal with you. Lord, we pray all of our spoken and silent prayers and all the prayers in the chat section in Jesus' name, and we pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As our time of worshiping God together comes to an end, and you go out into the world to share God's love with a broken and hurting world, go with this blessing from God. May you be strengthened with all God's glorious power so that you have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. For he has given you the inheritance that belongs to his people. And he has rescued you from the kingdom of darkness and transferred you into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus, who purchased your freedom and forgave your sins. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Remember, even though we're separated from each other, you are never alone. Jesus is always with you. And through him, we are connected to each other. God's blessings. Love
Shine.